All right, everybody, welcome to whatever this podcast is called, Ramblings from Joliet, whatever, whatever, with Tyler and Riker for today. Uh, for whatever date this is. The uh, 17th, 18th, 19th. Christmas is soon. Christmas, uh, Saturday, December 20th, 2014. Today we are playing uh, Soldier of Fortune for the PC. This is a game uh, for Windows 95 game from my childhood. I hold it very dear to my heart. And uh, let's begin. Today we are... What are we today, Tyler? Um, felt. Felt? Felt. Felt Mick. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> felt Mick. I'm feeling it. Alright, should we play the tutorial or should we start the game? I got no time for tutorials. All right. Unfair. I'm feeling it. Uh, let's do custom now. Let's see. Number of saves. Oh, uh, many. Type of spawning. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Enemy toughness. Bloodthirsty. Carrying capacity unlimited. Cheats available? Of course not. Wait, no. Uh, ain't no pussies. All right. Oh. All right, loading. Here we go. See, you get it. It's it's loading the. Oh. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Unlimited yeah. saves. Ridiculous spawns. Bloodthirsty. No cheats. All right. Again. I mean. That's. Oh. Where we're hitting sixty frames per second here. All right. So, Soldier of Fortune, yeah. Um, why is he called the Soldier of Fortune? Um, because that is the name for a soldier, like a like a mercenary. Mm. That's that, those are what uh, mercenaries are called. Shout out to the Raphael brothers. Okay, can, can I skip this? Hello. All right. Let's do this. What? Wow. He's... Alright, so... Oh! <laughs> Hello. Alright, so you should probably start talking about podcast things. Yeah. Uh... Uh... Yeah, so we're just, we're just playing Soldier of Fortune here, and uh... Our objective here is to showcase the prime of video games. Before Call of Duty was invented, before Battlefield, we had Soldier of Fortune. I, oh. Oh. I just played like Freddy Fish. And I don't know Blue's what Freddy Blue's. Fish is. What a, really? What, yeah. Freddy Fish is uh, this little yellow fish, and he or she, I guess he, it sounded like a it. girl, but it. It's probably it. And it had like a sidekick, I think, a little dumb fish. And they went around the ocean like doing missions and stuff. Freddy missions? Fish. Missions, like, I don't know. I don't remember it that well, I was like five. Alright, first objective, I just need to get to the first checkpoint so I don't have to start from the intro cinematic again. Oh. Oh, hello. Oh, apparently right click moves forward. <laughs> you go through the little turnstiles? I'm or? holding down the right mouse button. Alright. Why are they running at you, like, unarmed? Uh, they're not, they're not unarmed. I mean, they're like gangbangers. Like, mm. they don't know what the fuck they're doing. I guess, yeah. We've all been there. Oh, come no, on. Come you. on! Coming from the... This podcast is off to a great start. Yeah. Um. So, how, how's, how's your day? My day, it's been okay. Um, I just got back from a cruise. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Caribbean cruise. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Did you have to meet any pirates of the Caribbean? Um, Caribbean? One. Caribbean? Uh, she was a girl, and she had a beard. Oh. Um, but was it a hot girl with a beard? Oh, no. Um, I think that my favorite moment of my Caribbean cruise was our first island we hit was Jamaica. Is and Jamaica an island? Yes. Yeah, that's a stupid question. Yeah. We may need to lower the difficulty or the spawns. Uh, yeah. Um, nope. No. So, so pirate lady beard. 
Oh, Gypsy Pirate Lady woman. is unrelated to this story. But Oh, alright. Continue. Um, so we get to Jamaica and my I'm with I went on the cruise with my grandmother. And oh. she is a very sweet lady. She wow. Uh, <laughs> um she's very trusting of people and she likes to wander. Those are the two character traits you need to remember for this story. So, um we get to Jamaica. Okay. And we're in like the touristy area, you know, where yeah. all the little shops are and stuff. But uh, we end up wandering to the regular Jamaica part. So, um, because she was just kind of so walking. Un uncensored Jamaica. Uncensored Jamaica. And I knew we were there when this character comes up to us and he's got, he's a native and he's got like these big yellow sunglasses. Why are they knocking over the snack machine? Oh, I shot a um, cop. That was a cop. I didn't know there were cops. I thought it was everybody was evil. No, there was one on the floor. Oh, well. See, he dropped armor. Thank you. The sacrifice wasn't in vain. Um. Control is defined. So my grandma, she's smoking a cigarette, and this guy comes up, and he's like, I'm not going to do the accent because it'll be racist and offensive and bad. Um, but he comes up and he says, oh, do you want something better than a cigarette? <laughs> and she doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> she doesn't get it. So she's like, well, to me, cigarettes are the best thing ever. And I'm like, that's not the thing to say. <laughs> um, so he's following us and just talking to us. And He's following you. He's fo oh, he's following us down the street. He's been following you. And um, at one point he's like, oh, come with me to my convenience store. I'll show you something better than a cigarette. <laughs> and my grandma says, okay. <laughs> so she starts following this strange Jamaican man across the street. And I had to follow her back. Or I had to grab her back and get her get her to keep walking. Okay. And this guy keeps following us, and he comes up, and he's got a necklace in his hand. Okay. And, and it's a cheap ass like two dollar necklace. And he's like, look okay. at this necklace. Look how, um, look how nice it is. It's gonna give you powers. And he's got a baggie of weed in his palm, which my grandma either doesn't see or she doesn't know what it is. So he's showing her this necklace, while flashing weed at her, trying to get her to buy it. And then he's like, here, take this necklace. Take it and look at it. And she takes it, and he slips her the weed. So, uh, me and my grandma are standing in the middle of Jamaica, and she's almost accidentally bought weed, and I had to slap it out of her hand, and we had to keep going, and he kept following us. We finally got away from him, and then it happened he again. He finally escaped the Jamaican weed man. We got out of his territory. Um, that guy was taking a piss. Oh. So, and then it happened again, when someone went to give her, like, a cool handshake just out of the blue and she went for it and he slipped her weed no so my Wish it was that easy here I mean right oh. so my grandma almost yeah. bought weed twice and then well, did she really out, buy it the second time or was it just free the second time well she didn't get it either time I she gave it back but we couldn't get on the cruise with it we were gonna we would get in a lot of trouble probably just hide it in your shoes sometimes you have to take your shoes off but anyways, for, for cruise security. So we had a long talk about it, and you know she got it. Um, and then in Cajamel, two days later, she almost bought painkillers from a Mexican man in a jewelry shop. So she didn't actually learn her lesson. And that's the story of the time my grandma almost accidentally bought weed twice in Jamaica. All right. <laughs> I wish I had stories. Yeah. That's probably the most interesting story I have from the cruise. All right, so I'm not quite sure if people are. Oh, behind you? Yes. <laughs> um. No. Um. I'm not quite sure of what's happening here in in the video game. Um. It's been about ten years since I've played this game. And um. All I'm seeing right now is me going and killing a bunch of homeless people in subways with with guns. You're the soldier of fortune. You're solving the homeless crisis. Again, that's a cop. <laughs> um, I don't know, because last time I, uh, last life, he, uh, he shot at me. Oh. So maybe you're rogue and everyone's your enemy. Possibly. Well, Mick. Also, I can, I can lean. Like a, wow. like a cholo. Elbows out. Side to side. 
you know? Alright. This guy just yelled, stop screaming. Oh, I feel like there's a whole part of the experience I'm missing without getting the sound. I just didn't want to, I just wanted to leak into the microphones, you know? Yeah. Until we get, like... It's still entertaining. I'm watching <laughs> blocky murder. Rule number, whatever rule Zombieland taught me that was, always double tap. I think that was rule number two. What was rule number one? Running. Cardio, I think. Cardio, yep. That was it. Um, that movie made me fall in love with Emma Stone. Oh, yeah. And then The Help. Have you seen The Help? Uh, I have not. Uh, that movie made me fall in hate with Emma Stone. In hate, huh? Mm-hmm. Um, the Help is a, it's based off a book. It's, yes. yes. He is writing a story, or a an article or a piece or whatever about the servants, the black servants, and they're southern. And so Emma Stone is rocking a southern accent. Oh, oh. And it's just really annoying. Oh, God, what was that? What the hell? <laughs> All right, this is... Were they just they, they were finished pissed, at the same they were, time? They were piss warriors. Where is the set? The what? Where is this set? Where's the location? Ah, uh, this is New York, New York. Mmm. City, I presume. I would also presume so. Nice graffiti. Wizard. You're wizard, Harry. This isn't very accurate because, well, okay, where are the security guards? First off, they're seeing Actually, all of those this. are probably the security guards that I, that I, uh, on the, on the ground that I assumed were cops. Mm-hmm. What the hell is that? Uh, that was Batman. Actually, that was Two-Face, Harvey Dent. I've only seen the first Dark Knight movie. For shame. Fun fact about me. I saw... Oh. I forgot, this This is before autosave. I believe F5 is quick save? Where is the save button? That's multiplayer. Violence lock. Where is save? There is no save, you just play it straight through. <laughs> um, UC4, keypad delete. Levolution. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> um. Anyways, probably probably uh, on to our first topic here. Yes. Um. So I was on Twitter the uh, the other day. Uh, how many days ago was that? Oh, I was like six. I don't know. <laughs> probably about like between four and six days ago. I was on Twitter, and then I had seen a tweet from McDonald's on my uh, on my timeline, and I was like, I, I was wondering what McDonald's was doing on my timeline. I'm like, okay, a lot of my friends, I don't think they would retweet something from McDonald's. And then I looked, and it was a sponsored tweet from McDonald's, and it said, we're not too chicken to show you how we make our chicken nuggets. And that caught my attention. I was interested because we've all seen the videos, well, generalization, but whatever. We, we've seen the videos of how, uh, of how... Food is made. Of, of how, yes, of the McDonald's chicken nuggets are made, allegedly. And the chickens in the grinder, and oh, so sad, all, all tiny chicken dead. Sad? Sad. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, yeah, tiny chicken death. Um... Link to link to Tiny Chicken Death below yeah. in the description. Um, <laughs> and then there was this this whole video, and it opens up with Grant e. Mahara from uh, Mythbusters. Mythbusters, yeah, just just standing in front of uh, a Tyson Chicken Factory, and he is trying to figure out how to save at Soldier of Fortune. Um, no, he's trying to figure out um, what McDonald's chicken nuggets are made of, and so they send him. They, I, I'm assuming, is MythBusters, who, who, um, who gave him the opportunity, um, or maybe they just, maybe McDonald's came to him. I don't know. 
Then so he's standing in front of the Tyson Chicken Factory and he's wanting to know what's in the chicken nuggets and how they're made. So then they go inside and there's a film crew and this is just what supposedly is a normal, it's one of five, I believe, uh, plants in the nation that make chicken nuggets exclusively from McDonald's. And, um, and he goes in there and there's like an assembly line, what well, looks like an assembly line of like chicken workers mm-hmm. just filleting and cutting massacring ma- ma- massacring already dead chickens <clears throat> well they, they were they were already dead i guess they were headless and yeah. skinned <laughs> they were already dead um uh but yeah they were they had chickens they were I, real chickens i imagine yeah i'm sorry i'm just i'm just trying to save because i'm about to die uh and would I you really like me to explain the video while you try and Figure out how to autosave? No, that, that's not right. Um, then the... Then there's the, the plant manager, I would say, is talking with Grant, and they're exploring the, the factory, and he's asking her all of these, all of the questions that people usually ask about McDonald's chicken nuggets. Like, um... Like, uh... Are there are there beaks and are there beaks in your beaks and feet in your in your chicken? Are there uh, are there like gizzards and all the all the other gross nasty stuff that people don't want in their chicken? Are there are there that in there? Are there are there that? Um, are they in there? And the lady's denying all of these things, and she's basically countering each point Grant is making. About about how chicken nuggets are made, and they show what part of the chicken goes in the chicken nugget, yes, which I believe is the tenderloin, if I remember yes, correctly. Yes, uh, it's it's all the white meat. They they make sure to get rid of all the dark meat, which is the legs, and I don't know chicken anatomy, so shout out to this guy pissing again. Um, um so anyways, anyway, anyways, the the whole thing's not the point. Uh, link link to that video in the description below as well. But the entire point is, it changed my mind, for a short while at least, about how chicken nuggets uh, were made. And I was, because I, I partially believed the whole pink slime, the whole pink slime uh, thing. We've, I've seen that picture, you've seen that picture of the extruded chicken, what it looks like. And it, it doesn't look like that at all. And so I assumed, I'm like, okay, maybe McDonald's is legit. And so at the very end of the video, Grant is sitting down in a McDonald's. And he is talking about everything that he's he's seen and everything that he's learned that day, and uh, and it, it's a nice little wrap up to the. To Did the, you just shoot him in the dick? Yeah, this is this is the first game ever to introduce realistic dick shots. Mm. Remember that that's going to be on the quiz. <laughs> but the, the whole point of this random terrible storytelling that that I'm doing is not dying. Again. At the very end, uh, Grant is talking, and uh, he has a box of chicken McNuggets in front of him, and then he opens the box, and he's wrapping up his entire story, and then he goes to break apart a chicken nugget. And so he splits apart this chicken nugget, and there is this entirely unrealistic sound, this this whatever crunching noises make uh, comes from this chicken nugget, this unholy crunch, if you will. Just like this unnatural and it just comes from the chicken nugget it's like mmm look how tasty this sounds look at how tasty this looks that's that's basically what the crunch is saying it sounded like um somebody stepping in some crunchy leaves yes exactly and so as as most of you probably know chicken nuggets generally do not make that sound chicken nuggets don't make any sound when you break them open if I'm being honest well sometimes like, like if they're old and reheated yeah, oh, I mean, but, but if you get them fresh from McDonald's, no. So that that made me laugh. I, I, I was sitting in my room just alone, and I laughed my ass off. And I told Tyler immediately about it. And I immediately watched it twenty minutes before this podcast started. <laughs> and I, I just wonder if McDonald's really trying to convince, um, convince the the audience of their sincerity the general public about chicken nuggets and how they're made 
and convince them of their sincerity of how real their product is. Why did they go to such lengths to show that and then just entirely ruin it? Entirely ruin it by just making this unrealistic crunch sound. I, I just don't get it. Maybe that's the point. Maybe it was kind of like a, well, okay, now it was like a joke. Like <laughs> a cheesy kind of wrap up and they know it's cheesy. Okay. Yeah, playing the devil's advocate here. Goodbye. Jesus. It's a good thing I figured out how to save it. Yeah. Um, I thought the first red flag for me was that it was a McDonald's video. Mm-hmm. Um, if it was a third party, if it was like the MythBusters making the video, I would, I would buy into it a bit more. Okay. But you know, that's like. When North Korea tells us what North Korea is up to, are we really buying it? You know? Are we really I'm not buying saying it? that McDonald's is North Korea, but I'm not saying they're not. Um, <laughs> Ambiguously North Korea. Mm-hmm. So, I guess what I'm saying is it's not really credible. And then also that it's Tyson Chicken. They kind of have a history um, of the, like, maybe not, like, the shenanigans. S- slime, but like animal mistreatment. They have a bad rap for that kind of stuff. Yeah. So they become kind of less credible in my eyes when they are the people telling me how it's made. I don't know. And then the chicken crunchy noise was just kind of funny. May- maybe uh, maybe I hadn't actually thought about this before, which I probably should have, about the uh, about them just knowing it's a cheesy wrap-up and knowing that they're actually doing that instead of trying to be, like, extra... What's the word? Um, um, I don't know. Over the top, I guess. Yeah. They're trying to show off a bit more. Yeah. Be a little bit more grandiose with their, uh, with their video. They're like, oh, yeah, check this out, check this out. But I don't know. Maybe they weren't doing that. I don't know. I, c- I could be wrong. I went in a circle, I don't know where I'm going, and I don't know how to open a door. I'm gonna have to consult this again. I probably should have prepared more for this podcast. Yeah, well, you know, you win some, you lose some. I have I have lost or died, rather, at least eight times so far. How many times in the game? <laughs> at least once. Yeah. So... For, for those of you who haven't played um, played any type of older video game like this at all, this was basically what I grew up on. Imagine five-year-old Riker playing Soldier of Fortune. Um, just It would explain all those times you murdered a bunch of people in the subway. <laughs> that would actually explain that a lot, especially my particular hatred towards urinating homeless <laughs> men. Yeah. I would... I would say. Okay, use a med kit is paged down. I have night vision goggles. I just, I just need to open a door. Use a space. Why is use space? Use is always E. <sighs> My mind immediately goes towards space when it comes to that kind of thing, but you know. What are they uh, shooting at? Oh! <laughs> Levolution. Oh god. <laughs> You can't, you can't do that with a shotgun. Just. (laughs) Live and learn. Live and learn. Live and learn. I don't quite know how much time we're at right now. Um. Oh, fuck me. Oh, you're dead. Uh, when did we start? Uh, I don't know, because we, ca- I mean, we started. Just kind of started. Um, who cares? <laughs> I just, yeah. We'll just let it be as long as we want it to be. Yeah, this next, next time, podcast. next time more structure. Probably. No. No. <laughs> no. All right. I, I don't know if I can, if I can play this game. You don't think so? Oh, come on. I mean, five-year-old me played it, but I literally have a sliver of health. They just shouted, he's in here. No, he's not. 
that guy literally disintegrated. Oh god! <laughs> and Macho Man hanging out around the corner every time. He's like, I'm going to wait. Oh man. That's the voice you give that guy? Yeah. It's like it's like you would think that he's like, oh yeah, big tough guy. Yeah. Oh, that's a civilian. Well, you know. Alright, <laughs> dick kick him. <laughs> dick kick him. The <laughs> <Is it> name? <laughs> because if it's not, I'm gonna make it a name someday. Alright, we're gonna name the guys that look like that dick kick him. What it's was that, Blondie? Uh, yeah, bl blonde guy with like the flat top. Um, that's like a ripoff of Duke Nukem. Dick kick him? I got you. Put it on the easiest settings. We'll just edit that out, right? Yes. <laughs> All right, here we are for the f for the first time <laughs> in Soldier of Fortune. I've never seen this before. My reflexes are just that great. Can I 360? I can't 360. I'm totally I thought about playing, uh, have you ever heard of, uh, Postal? Yes. I was thinking about playing that for this, but I thought that it would be way too violent for this podcast. Too violent? Yeah, like, this is probably one-tenth of the violence Postal brings, and, and this you can- oh! I don't know, I sort of have a Viscera obsession. Well, yeah, but I mean, like, some of our viewers slash listeners, well, viewers, they'd be going on as watching this, um... They might not appreciate um, us doing that. Well, okay. Oh, so I feel bad for whoever's got to clean up this mess. Scruffy the janitor. You think those are these are the same universe? Yeah. I this can buy it. Why are they? Why do they think that was a good place to hide? Like, was there wasn't this, even a toilet in this one. Is there a strategy here? Like, we're going to hide in the stalls, and when he comes in the bathroom, we'll all shoot him. <laughs> what if I didn't come into that bathroom? Then it's like that game of hide and seek you played with your cousins at Christmas, but really they just didn't want to play with you at all, so you just hid under the table for an hour and a half while everyone else opened presents? Yeah. I have definitely experienced that one. I experienced that except I was in the laundry room. And crying. I experienced that, except I was the one who never found my cousins. Oh. Because I was the old. Well, I am the oldest, and uh, yeah, I'm just a I'm just a douche. Open says me. Oh, I'll I'm go also fuck the myself. oldest. If that changes your perspective of the story at all. So they just your younger cousins just sort of left you. <laughs> you just wanted to play some hide and seek, and they didn't want to. Pretty much. Hold on, let's see if I can play this as a stealth game. Nope. You can't really hear, but the the, uh, the bullet the bullet sound effects are actually quite good. So what are you doing? I'm looking for... A way out? Aren't we all? Oh. No, I'm looking for a way to progress in this game. I think I have oh. to press that to open that. And get in there. I have no idea. What kind of subway is this? I haven't seen a single train platform yet. Who said it was a subway? Uh, this is actually a subway. I picked up some C4. Oh! And hey, now we're playing Five Nights at Freddy's. The original. Uh, what's this? Oh. Get in it. I can't- I don't think I can jump. Let me just... Oh, what am I doing? I wish I would. I wish I knew how much time we were at. Oh, um, I would have to guess probably about twenty minutes at least. Twenty minutes? At least twenty twenty-five minutes. How much does it does it say over there? It says 
1251. That's seconds. At the very bottom? Oh, at the bottom? Yeah. Oh, 39. Then we're, we've been recording for 39 minutes. We were recording before, so I guess yeah. we're about at a half hour. Yeah? Yeah, sure. Okay. All right. That works. Yeah. All right. Um. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Sure. <laughs> You're like zapping them with a portal ray, sending them to another dimension. Yeah. Pretty much. That's how I do what I do. All right, all right. Um. Hmm. I know where to go from here. Let's shoehorn in a conversation. What does shoehorn mean? You know, like what a shoehorn is? Like a. I've never been aware of what a sh what what's a shoehorn. A shoehorn is like, I've never had one. Uh Oh, those graphics. Oh god! Oh, that was my hand. Um, a shoehorn is like the little. I guess it's like a piece of rubber or something. You put it in the heel of your shoe while you're putting your shoe on to like wedge your foot into your shoe. Oh, th they have those? Yeah, it's a new thing. Are you unaware? Everyone has one these days. Is is the shoehorn uh, the new fleek thing? Is, is the shoehorn fleek these days? I don't know what fleek means, and even <laughs> I know that's, how not, that's not how you use the word fleek. Uh, I, I don't, I don't know what fleek is. I saw someone use it on Facebook, uh, the other day, and we were gonna talk. I have no idea where to go. Hey, we're shoehorning in a conversation. Fleek. I don't know what fleek means. People say, on fleek, particularly towards eyebrows. Okay. Um, which leads me to believe it means on point. But does it though? Why wouldn't they just say on point? Well, I guess it's just synonyms, right? But to I me, guess. if you have the option between saying something is on point and on fleek. I feel like it'd be more respectful to just say on point, even though. Fleek sounds like a verb. To fleek something. Or someone. Or like you're saying flick with an accent. I fleek you. I fleek you. Or that. Um, but I don't know. It doesn't work uh, in the way that. So, <laughs> this is effortless, right? That's the setting we've been, you're playing at here? Yeah. And how long have you been running around the subway system just waving a knife around? <laughs> um, without, without all the editing, it's about 79 hours, actually. Mm. I'm, just, I'm just a really skillful editor. I need to go in here, but I have no idea how to go in there. Need a key. What is this? Fire extinguisher. I can't tell. Right, so I, need, I need a key, so do you think it'll be on a body? I like the little knife flip thing he does, especially like that nobody's around for him to impress. So he's just doing it for his own good. He's literally insane. I would not doubt it. Do I have like a grappling hook or something? All right. I'm pretty sure I can jump through here. I'm not even joking, but I don't know what the jump button is. Jump is E? Yes. All right, now how about crouch? crouch? It's, it was there. You can crouch. C. I've played this game a million times before. I know everything about it. All right. Where was he hiding? What? <laughs> Unleash the beast. <laughs> uh, my name is not John. My name is uh, Felt. Ultimate. Oh, nice mohawk. That's those notorious New York street thugs. From the hospital. I mean the Knights Templar. I like I those designer jeans. Shout out to Bobby Jones. My podcast. Shut up. All right. Don't shake your head at me. I've been shaking my head for this whole time. Just a constant. You should really get that inner ear problem checked out, where you have to constantly shake your head in order to stay upright. <laughs> <laughs> what 
What is this? It's an emergency medical station. You gonna give them some CPR or something? <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. What's the point of this? Like I don't a know. Floating door? I'm pretty sure on this setting they literally can't shoot you. I don't know what you're talking about. This is this is the hardest difficulty setting. What's that? Oh, there's the train. I feel sorry for the people that are like trying to get somewhere. And they have to go through a maze of bodies. Oh, I just meant just to get to the train. It seems like it's quite a journey. Oh yeah, of course. All right, so I think I need to get on the tracks. Yeah. That's yes. That's what you have to do. Do it. Do it now before it's too late. Go. Oh, this is the end of the line. What? That doesn't go anywhere. Is that a laptop? I think that's a light. Yes. Yes. Alright. Well, I think it's time we moved on to our main discussion. Yeah, it's been long enough. Since, uh, since we're so good at segues. Um... All right, why don't you start us off here? Train. Ethics. <laughs> Morals. What do they mean? Are you a moral person? No. Riker? <laughs> All right, our main discussion today is on uh, is on ethics, if you couldn't gather what that from... Hell? <laughs> from Santa Squad over here. <laughs> He's like a lost fisherman. Is he wearing fish on his feet? <laughs> I hope there's no... I'm gonna get hit by a train. Um... Uh, is on ethics today, and, uh... Tao and I had, had, uh, come up with this... With this topic from, uh... From Mr. Eleveld. Uh, we all... Mark. If you're listening. <laughs> Mark. Um... So, in, in, uh... Mark's, Mark's class, uh, we, uh, was it, was it towards the end of the year? I think it's towards the end of the year. It doesn't year. really matter. The end of the year. All right. All right, Mr. <laughs> Tyler. Why don't, why don't you, why don't you explain? Well, essentially we just had a whole class period talking about ethics and morals and... Is this moral to you? I don't see anything wrong with it. His leg is like there, but not. Um, and like. Oh. Ooh. I don't know who he is. He's got a lot of tattoos, though. See, talking is hard, isn't it? No. Um, but it was just. It was mostly. Um, kill one to save the group. Sort of stuff. And whether you should do it. So. Is this what you were supposed to do? I hope so. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> they were waiting for you to notice them. They were pretty. Why is it so hazy in this subway station? Where I don't know, it but it seems like you're getting off topic a lot. Oh, I've I've passed the torch on to you at this point. I've explained oh, have the you? premise. All right. It's not my podcast. Or is it? Ooh, ooh. Um fine. So it was, it was basically a bunch of scenarios, kill one to save the group. Example being, there are 30 people on a, what was it, a trolley? Yeah, yeah. let's use train though, because there's okay. a train here. True. Um, there are like 30 people on a train, and it's hurling down a hill towards someone on a track. And that, well done, Feldmick. Um, it's hurling down uh, train tracks, and towards one of your loved ones. It could be anyone. It could be boyfriend, girlfriend, wife, husband, uh, mother, father, whatever. Little Cousin. sister, thing, whatever. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Can that be the, uh, the, the screen, the thumbnail? The thumbnail. <laughs> um, and you had a choice. Either let the, the train run over your loved one, or... Or 
you flip a switch, pull a lever, something like that, and then it derails the train or diverts it somewhere, and the train explodes, everybody on the train dies, but your loved one lives. And so, he asked everyone in the class what, what, uh, what they would choose. I think we wrote it down on a piece of paper, or whatever. I don't know. Uh, and so, I chose... I chose to just let the people on the train live, and oh, yeah. my loved one uh, was sadly run over. And so, what did you choose, Tyler? Same, same thing. Same thing. All right, why? Why? Because there's a lot of people. So and 30, 30 people I don't want to be responsible. Feel. It's a lot compared to one, and I don't want to be the respons- I don't want to be responsible for the murder of that many people, because that's really making me a murderer. So, but you know, one person would make you a murderer. So technically, no, not you, doing anything doesn't make you a murderer. If I not pulling the switch doesn't make me a murderer. No, no, that that that's absolutely correct. But um, I I don't know, I don't know. But uh, so later, later on, what what was another example he gave? I wanna I wanna give one more before I get to the end example. It was uh, there's the fat guy, where there's a train. Um, there's a train barreling towards, like, we'll say a big old cliff, and the train's going to go off the cliff, but over the train tracks, so you're standing on a bridge, and you're looking down at the train tracks, you're standing next to this big old fat guy. And if you push the fat guy down onto the tracks, the train's going to hit the fat guy, and the fat guy's going to die, but he's somehow obese enough to stop a fully <laughs> moving train, and everyone on the train's going to live. So your decision is be directly responsible for the murder of a fat guy by literally pushing him in front of a train or don't push this guy in front of a train and let everybody on the train go off a cliff and die. All right. And uh, and the whole reasoning behind that example being different than the previous example is that this guy is obese. He is fat. He is clearly not clearly, but uh, some people would look on him with a demeaning manner. And, uh, cause like, oh, he's fat, he's not doing anything with his life, uh, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I don't think that was the main point. I no, think no, it was no, just... it, it, it was, it, cause it's make, it's make you think less of him. He made him fat and o- obese and just make him seem like some, something, something that uh, some people would find un... He's gonna live shorter anyway. Yeah. So, just undesirable, something, something like that. Okay. Um. So that was Elavel's point, and just to get you to sway, to sway towards uh, pushing this guy in front of a train, because some people who said uh, they they wouldn't sacrifice their family member, but they'd sacrifice some fat guy, and he's trying to say that lives have different values uh, to some... Well, it's not his example. I mean, it's, it's a well-known psychiatric test or whatever, but... I'm saying he because we were in the class. Okay, well... You could talk at any point, Siler. I just had to be that guy. Um, yeah, you're right, though. You can do the podcast. Sure, go ahead. No, I, I, have, I have no over. problem with you saying something, but just, like... What is happening here? I am jump. floating off this train. Can you jump? Are you? I can. I can, but I should save it before I jump. Okay. There was a sickening. I'm not sure what squish. I thought would <laughs> happen. And what did you choose with the fat guy? Um, it was a while ago. If I remember, oh, okay. I guess I'll pick now. I think that the right thing to do is push the fat guy. Okay. And why? Because it's the same as save one life, or kill and one life to save many. Uh, the idea that several lives are more valuable than one life. So I guess that's probably what I would do. But okay. I'm a bit more torn on that one. Um, because, I don't know, this guy didn't ask for it. As far as like the person's, your family member standing on the tracks, they're kind of asking really for it. You can do anything. Like, like, like you're, the fat guy is just watching. He didn't ask for this. Maybe he's got a family to go home to. Mm-hmm. A big fat family. They're going to have like three dinners. <laughs> Damn it, Tyler. Um, I was trying to... All right. Anyways. <laughs> Anyways, Tyler. So, 
he didn't ask for it. All right. So it's like there's nothing about him. He's not in a point where he's really needs to sacrifice himself. Yes. And you're choosing his decision for yes. him by just pushing him. So that's where it gets a little sketchy. Yes, and, and that, that example was given, I'd say, like in the middle mm -hmm. of his discussion. And also at the end of his discussion, his very last example was, I'm, am I stuck? His very last example was, you're a doctor in a hospital, and uh, someone someone comes in, and they're, they're pretty healthy there. There's nothing really that wrong with them, right? That, that what he was saying? Oh, yeah, and they're, they're coming in for a regular checkup. Yeah, like a, just like a checkup. I don't know why they, they fall that. asleep. They fall asleep on the little table bed thing. All right. They pass out. Uh, and then you have, let's say, six, ten patients, something like that. Uh, uh, a number of patients. And they all are, are missing an organ. They're missing right? an organ. They, they will die in the next day. And you could choose to steal this guy's organs. Just harvest them. Just yes. His word was harvest their organs, and save these people's lives. Um, Naturally, killing the guy you're harvesting. Seeing as how he would be an empty chest cavity. Uh, I don't know. Intestines might remain though. Maybe. If they're lucky. Maybe he's hungry too. Maybe he's gonna bring home some some home. Um. So yes. Uh, what are you doing? Trying to figure out what the fuck to do. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. I, I need to get to the front of this train. I don't know what my objective is. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is exciting to watch. Which is why you should just listen to the podcast. But. Um, so, uh, na uh, almost naturally, everyone was a bit appalled by this example. They were like, oh, this is a really extreme example. And I knew Elavelt was doing that for a reason. Uh, you have to get in there. No, I don't. I was stuck in here for oh, like five no, minutes. Don't. Just kidding, I lied. Um, what? Mm. Uh, and so, Tyler, what did you choose? You don't. You don't do it. You let him. You let everyone else die. Let everyone else die. Mm -hmm. Um, which is the more sane choice. Really, um, the less creepy one. The less creepy one. Yes, I would. I would as well go with go with that as well. Um, but when Tyler and I were discussing this uh, another time, I had revealed that I chose to harvest the guy's organs. Yep, because he's a sociopath. Not denying that. Um, I chose to harvest the guy's organs, but it wasn't because that I would clearly harvest someone's organs. It was because I had stuck with one side, the the let one die or kill one to save the larger number. I had stuck with that throughout uh, throughout the entire discussion, and I thought that it would be a bit hypocritical of me to go back and choose something else. Because if my because if that entire philosophy is is true for most other examples, then that example, in my my opinion, should be no different than than killing a fat guy to save to save uh, save the people on a train. I mean, what's what's the difference really between pushing a fat guy uh, in the middle of a train track and and killing one guy in an operating room? What's well, the difference? The difference is. There's not much difference between those two examples, <laughs> and I'm a hypocrite. Um, but as far as like the loved one, killing the loved one, or harvesting a guy's organs, those are two totally different things. Because it's about uh, responsibility, and it's about taking action or not taking action. And oh, ooh, wow, okay, into the nether there. Um, what was I saying? Something important. Taking action. Taking action. Not taking action. And so, when it's just, oh, when it's just Levolution. a person, um, standing on the tracks or whatever, you're not, like, you're not 
there's no responsibility for you to like do anything. Like if you don't do anything, you're not. You're not personally held responsible. Yeah. And I guess my big problem with your outlook was that you're treating it as like one philosophy is always true, always in every situation, and that's just not true. Which, which in most cases I would completely agree with because your word for it and uh, it's what did you use? Um, an umbrella. umbrella philosophy. It's an umbrella philosophy. An umbrella philosophy is not good to have in a lot of situations because situations change. Yeah, situations change. Um, not every situation is the same. Um, uh, another, another. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna stay stay long on this at all. Yeah. Um, um, on on this little offshoot here, but an- another philosophy, like an umbrella philosophy, is like cheating. As just just an example, I'm not going to stay long on this at all because I don't want to start the discussion. Um, because I don't feel like it. But uh, so some people would say cheating is bad. Cheating is always bad. Um, like cheating on your partner is bad. It's like don't cheat on your partner. No matter what, you have no reason at all ever to cheat on your partner. And it's like there is no excuse for cheating on your partner, whether they mistreat you, whether they don't, whatever. You should not cheat on your partner. And that is another umbrella philosophy. But so in your in your point, situations change. There could be reasons in which you should, or it would be acceptable socially for you to cheat on your partner. Which is just another, just, just like another if they're point. handicapped, <laughs> and they can't do anything about it. <laughs> Am I right? Ella's. <laughs> All right, your turn to talk. <laughs> I, can't, um, I can't follow that up. Do you... Oh. Was he pissing, too? Is Dude, everybody just pissing? pissing? Okay, I guess you didn't want to stay on this offshoot very long, then. I guess I guess that's just an example you're using it there. Um, well, well, if you'd like to... Oh. Uh, oh, that's one hell of a se- sequence <laughs> there. <laughs> the level design is impeccable. Um... Well yes. done, Feltmick. All right, um, you you can give your opinion on that. Yeah, no, no, go ahead. I think that that's a situation where it seems like an umbrella philosophy maybe is okay. So, but so so you're saying you have a you have a philosophy on umbrella philosophies. Yes, and it's an umbrella philosophy, ironically. <laughs> so your umbrella philosophy on umbrella philosophies is that umbrella philosophies are not always acceptable are very rarely acceptable. Very rarely there acceptable. There are very few instances. I have. I don't think I can come up with an example right now where I can come up with an acceptable umbrella philosophy. Because I think there are always circumstances that can change how you view situations. Are you trying to look up her dress there? Was that the strategy? Was that the plan? Not exactly. Your turn to talk. <laughs> Hold on, I'm transfixed by his gaze. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, my, my, uh, how do I interact? What do I do? Excuse me, oh. I'm looking for a back issue of Soldier of Fortune magazine. <laughs> That's the name of the game. I think I can help you. The voice sounds so realistic. Um, this doesn't look, look like a magazine room. <laughs> all right this is where he keeps all the good shit is the game over is this the end have you won i think two missions later i have won oh Fuck. john sounds like we have our samuel work jackson hello Three that's not samuel years. jackson one in, in his 20s what's first kosovo yeah a serb faction that was fighting again Just um are we gonna the finish this yeah, we're probably- we gonna wrap this up because <laughs> this isn't going very um, for hey, first podcast, man, whatever. Yeah, whatever. sure. I mean, hey, if people can put up with this shit, they can put up with better content. 
If you're listening to this right now, thank you. Seriously, you really? deserve a gift <laughs> pet. Like, you. I'm barely listening, honestly. Oh man. Um. Oh shit! I forgot my password. Access granted. Oh. There is no password. That's it. Oh, hey, look, they reused the main menu. Mission information downloaded. I'm not reading that. So, um, basically, Tyler doesn't, uh, he doesn't view Umbrella Philosophies as acceptable, rare, like, rarely ever. And I think that there are a decent amount of situations in which an Umbrella Philosophy would be acceptable. Okay. Definitely acceptable. Example. Acceptable, uh, being the one that I brought up, cheating. You think that there's never a situation? I think that if you're unhappy, just leave. I mean, that, that's that's the, oh, just the, the stuff you see on Twitter. It's like, oh, if you're unhappy, just leave. It's just those bitches that tweet about that. It's just like, but no, I really think it's just like, if you really have a reason to cheat, go. It's like, always. It's just like, if you're married. Okay, here's the situation. All right, go ahead, go ahead. I will, I will respond. Your girlfriend is in a coma. Don't cheat. But you were planning on breaking up with her anyway. You were forced to stay right, with right, her. Right. You can't break up with Permanent her. Coma? Permanent coma? You don't, well, you don't know. You can't see the future. She's in a coma and it looks like it's going to last for a while. You're just going to not do anything and sit in that unsatisfaction of that and not do anything? Better, better subscribe to a Brazzers account. Because you're not, even if you were planning on breaking up with her. I would give it a certain amount of time. And then it's okay to cheat? No, and then I would probably talk with her family. And then ask them if it would be okay that we're not considered together anymore. In all honesty. Is that really breaking up? Is that like ending the relationship? Yeah, because if she can't, like, if, if she can't choose whether or not to pull the plug on herself, <laughs> then why should she be able to choose whether or not she's still in a relationship? I would wait for a while and, like, it's just like, oh no, my girlfriend's in a coma. Two weeks later, she wakes up. It's just like, oh, I slept with three other women. It's just like, you kind of should have tried to wait a little bit. Okay. So, I would, I would not just go and sleep with other women. My girlfriend was in a coma. It doesn't help my argument. I can't come up with an example, really, where it's completely okay to cheat on someone. <laughs> I'm just saying, as an umbrella philosophy, I don't believe there are very many no, I, I, situations I, where umbrella I, philosophies are I good. Totally, I totally feel you. I'm not supposed to agree. No, I, 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 I feel where your point is coming from. I understand. I just... Like... What does decent amount mean? Decent amount? Like, I would wait... No, 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 not that. I mean, there's a decent amount of umbrella philosophies. Like, situations where an umbrella philosophy oh, so, is so, beneficial. So, let, let's say, because I obviously don't have a description or a whatever of all the umbrella philosophies ever. So, just give you a rough percentage, I would say? Uh, sure, or just like... Of times, one would be okay. Well, okay, percentage is just kind of hard. Um, well, yeah, but I mean, how else could I answer that question? Yeah. Do you think it's very often? Like, would you say it's more than half the time? No. Would you say it's a third of the time? I'd go with probably 40 to 45%. That an umbrella philosophy and always having the same philosophy, no matter the situation, is beneficial. Yeah. In in my opinion, um, uh, uh, let's see, I'll, I'll come up with another example. Okay. Okay, um, I think that's that's all I'm gonna, all I'm gonna grab. Yeah, um, another um, like another umbrella philosophy. That's okay. Um, all right, just a just a uh, here here's one that's that's gonna be real easy for you. Uh, umbrella philosophy. All right. Umbrellas in the rain. Yeah, I mean, a hundred percent of the time. You should always use an umbrella. Um, what I was, what I was going to say is, uh, let's say pretty much, pretty much, I would say. It's not pretty much, it's all the time. Okay, fine. 
Uh, well, then I can't, I can't use this. It's not an umbrella of philosophy. If it's just no, pretty I, I, much I'm, all the time. I'm saying, I'm saying, like, fine, all the time, we can pretty much agree that Hitler did a bad thing. He did wonders for their economy. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. But I mean, like, he also killed a lot of people. And while I normally play, as it sounds, I normally play devil's advocate for Hitler. And I'm, I'm like, he did, he was doing what was best for the German people, but he was also being selfish in a point, blah, 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 etc. What the fuck was... <laughs> Just, what it, was it couldn't even take it anymore. <laughs> what was that even being supported by? <laughs> Level design, man. Um, oh, I get it. Um, so we can pretty much just agree that, that Hitler... the Holocaust was bad? Is that what we're saying? Yeah. Yeah. And so, while some Nazi extremists might think otherwise, we, that's why I was saying pretty much agree mm -hmm. that it was a bad move. Um, is that a philosophy? Though? That's just like... Well, okay, my philosophy then is is uh, genocide or the act of trying to commit it is bad. Always. Always. What if there is a... Are you going to pull me into an Ender's Game scenario? Uh, I don't know. I've never... Is that is that a movie or a movie book? Movie and book. Movie and book. I've never read or seen. But, so what if there's a group of bad people? Or bad, like, I don't know, aliens or something. Somebody in this so group is... Philosophy. Sure. It's never okay to wipe them out. I would say, uh, no. No. Not, not at all. Um, because, uh, let, let me bring in Ender's Game. Um, that was that was a book series that I that I definitely enjoyed, and I had watched the movie when it came out because it was uh, it definitely looked like a very interesting movie. And so in Ender's Game, and and uh, it was basically just the first book because this all happened in the first book. Um, if you want to know what happened, or if you don't want to know what happens in Ender's Game, do not listen. All right, well I'll it's be like, outside. This is, this is your spoiler alert right here. This is very clear. I'm giving you more than like ten seconds to skip ahead. All right. Skip to about 55 minutes. Uh, Just kidding, we're probably past 55 minutes. Just kidding, I don't know. We have no idea what's happening. Um, so in, in Ender's Game, uh, these aliens uh, came to Earth, and they, they had this big... I don't want to accurately, well, inaccurately call it an invasion. They had a bunch of, bunch of ships there, and uh, there were there was a lot of fighting and uh, obviously uh, just a bunch of bunch of shit going down. And so eventually the uh, the human race took and and fought fought them back and got them Ooh, off the planet. Represent humans. Humans. Uh, took and took and fought them back and uh, got them off the planet. And so, they didn't stop there. In in the book and the movie, they take and they're training uh, this entire like army to go and fight them on their home planet. And they go all the way across light years and fight them on their home planet and completely eradicate all of them. Okay, they, that's wait, a step. Okay. Wait, wait. And so. After, afterwards, we find out they were they were only trying to defend themselves. Like they they fought back when they when they attacked their planet because they were trying to defend themselves. And the, it turns out the first time they were they were trying to make like make contact when the humans like attack them. And it gets that gets into all the sci-fi bullshit. But basically, there's always another side to the story. So while someone thinks that, uh, that a group is a bad, bad or extremist, it's, it's might not always be the case. But it's conceivable that there would be a situation where the other side of the story is just that they're assholes, <laughs> right? And there's a difference between genocide and eradication. No, there genocide is quite literally eradication. There was a genocide of the Jews. There are still Jews. I know some. They're there. They're out there. So, they weren't completely eradicated. Here. 
Let's just, 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 just for the sake, yes. Define eradication. I'm typing this into my phone. I mean, define genocide. Genocide, genocide here. I'm sorry. It's fine, genocide. The deliberate killing of a large group of people. Okay. Okay. See, maybe maybe my base was off because I wasn't. I wasn't realizing. Uh, I was thinking extermination. Okay. That's my bad. That's my bad. Um, so genocide, the deliberate killing of a large group of people. Um, I'm not saying it's well, like a majority of the time genocide is cool. I'm just saying that the problem with an umbrella philosophy is you put yourself in a situation where you can't even conceive a situation where your philosophy might not be beneficial or it might be wrong because that's just ignorant and not the case. There are always exceptions, except to that rule. And that's kind of where I'm going with it. See, this, is, this is real difficult because I definitely see where you're coming from, like like as as with your your other point about the the fat person and the organs, etc. Because this is still in the whole same discussion. Basically. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, this turned from ethics into umbrella philosophies. Yeah. Uh, but I don't quite know how to. Respond. Good. <sighs> well, let's see. How long have we been going for? Uh, how, long how, enough how that much, we can. Let's say. End oh, it. As I bumped the mic. Sorry. Yeah. Well. Whatever. How, how much? Uh, how long have we been going for? Seventy-five. Seventy-five. All right. It looks like this is time to wrap this up. Um. So how about we wrap this up with uh, Tyler's fact of the week? Tyler's fact of the week. The fact of the week is there are seventeen houses of parliament. 14 apartments, three condos, and one townhouse. All right, and that'll do it for this week on uh, of this podcast is called Ramblings from Joliet. And uh, we will see you next time. All right, goodbye, Tyler. Bye, Riker.